Hello, Eagle Nation. I'm Katie Tolbert. And I'm Shaquem Holloway. And this is Sports Talk. So this upcoming weekend is probably the biggest game of the season for the Eagles. It is against their SoCon rival and soon to be Sunbelt rival, Appalachian State University. Of course, GSU wants to beat every team they face off with, but App just ignites a fire in this team that makes them want to do nothing but win. But the Mountaineers are the only conference opponent the Eagles don't have a winning record against, the record being 15 and 12 and 1. At the same time, though, we see a GSU team who is struggling but still has a record of 4-2, while struggling for the Mountaineers is an understatement. They are 1-6 and six and tied for second to worst record in the SOCON. They are bad, upstate that is, but with rivalries, everyone knows records never matter in college football. It's like Red Sox Yankees in baseball or Raven Steelers in the NFL. Mm -hmm. No matter the record, those teams hate each other and always bring a little something extra to those rivalry games. It's funny because we consider GSU struggling and they have the fourth best overall record in the conference as well as the fourth best SOCON record in the conference. However, the thing to consider in this matchup is the fact that the Eagles are 0-2 in their two conference road games and traveling to Boone, North Carolina this weekend won't exactly be a pleasant environment. And more importantly, the Eagles are 4-10-1 all-time when playing App State and Boone. Now that we talked about how hard these teams want to beat each other, it's time to get in a little bit of an argument. The question is, are they actually going to care as much as they have in the past? I will go ahead and say, when you go onto the Southern Conference website, it is almost depressing to see that App and GSU are currently at the bottom of the standings list because they are ineligible for the conference championship and for postseason play. I just don't see these two teams hashing it out as intensely because they are not competing to be number one in the SOCON this year. I feel sometimes watching the games that there isn't that same drive and ambition. What are these guys playing for? What are these seniors going to walk away with? Not a nice big shiny ring, I can tell you that much. Well, Katie, with all due respect, I think you're wrong. That rivalry has existed since the 90s, and it's going to continue in the Sun Belt Conference next year. This season, they're playing for bragging rights. They are playing to recognize which team is better this year and which team will be better next year, when it really matters. App State hates GSU and vice versa. If they had the worst record in the world, they still want to beat the crap out of the Eagles. If these teams have anything to fight for, it's that all-time record you mentioned earlier. With GSU behind, it surely, does, it surely doesn't want to lose its last game as members of the SOCON App State. With App State struggling and a very slim chance at a winning record, they love to knock the Eagles just one more time. Think about it, Katie. When Georgia Southern announced its move to the Sun Belt Conference, President Keel referred to App State as the team to be named later. I mean, that's some kind of hate. I totally see your point of view because I feel that way about App myself when it comes to this rivalry. But I think both of these teams have been beaten down pretty hard this season, so I see a more lighthearted game. Kind of like, let's do this FBS move together. All right, we're going to take a quick break from football, but we'll be right back after more of the, with this commercial break. Run on down to Statesboro and keep on running in the Run the Borough 5K. Join us at the starting line in front of City Hall, December the 6th at 5.30. We'll be racing to the finish line to get back and enjoy all the festivities of the holiday celebration. Get pictures with Santa, enjoy caroling, holiday crafts, and warm up with some chili town. So join us here first Friday, December 6th for the Run the Borough 5K and the downtown holiday celebration. For more info, go to visit statesboroga.com. I'll race you up there. Sure. Woohoo! Okay, back to this matchup that has got us fighting up here. Let's get to the specifics of this weekend. I'm going to ramble off some numbers here real quick. GSU has scored 13.8 more points on average, has totaled 242.4 more rushing yards on average, which is no surprise to anyone who knows the triple option, 
has converted 9% more third downs and has converted 28% more fourth downs. Hearing this, you would think, Psh, the Eagles got this. But if we revisit last year, the Eagles didn't exactly excel against the Mountaineers. At broke GSU's 14-game home winning streak with a 31-28 victory. Shaquem, what do you think is going to happen this Saturday? I think it's going to be different from last year's result, definitely. App State has the second best passing offense in SoCon, right behind Sanford, which beat GSU earlier this season. That Mountaineers passing offense led by Cameron Bryant and Jamal Landry Jackson is a significant threat to GSU's defense, which has been inconsistent this season despite being ranked third in the SoCon. However, I think the deciding factor in this game will be turnovers, something App State has been struggling with this season. Just in their last game, the Mountaineers had five turnovers, leading to, leading to a firm in victory. App sits at the bottom of the conference in turnover margin, sitting at minus .71. Conversely, GSU has a turnover <laughs> margin of plus .17. I see the Eagles capitalizing off good field position because of the Mountaineer turnovers and knocking off App State 31-20. The history between these two teams is awesome, and both sides have had their years. But this year has got to go to the Eagles. The Mountaineers are simply not as strong of a team as they have been in the past. I mean, it's at versus GSU. It's not going to be a blowout, but I'm predicting GSU holds a minimum seven-point lead the entire game. It's definitely going to be a war. Speaking of war, GSU students went to war with each other last Friday at the Iron Eagle Challenge hosted by Southern Adventures. For those of you who don't know, the Iron Eagle Challenge takes place annually in October. There are three different heats, men's, women's, and co-eds. Teams consist of two players and most of the participants dress up so they can win the costume contest <laughs> afterwards. It's a really exciting event. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm here with Chris Butler, Assistant Director at CRI. Chris, tell us a little bit about Iron Eagle. The Iron Eagle is in its ninth year now. It started um, in 2005. It's an adventure race similar to the amazing race you may have seen on TV where um, students basically will run, paddle, bike, and then face mystery challenges along the way. Uh, really, this is who's going to be the Iron Eagle today. Chris, tell us a little bit about how, how the events are made and um, the different challenges. Well, I don't even know the challenges. They are uh, completely a mystery. Um, the Southern Adventure staff here at Campus Recreation and Murals creates them. I know in years past they've had um, models of uh, Legos that you would have to look at and run 50 yards away and reassemble from memory. So it could be it's a little bit of um, some of them are real, um, real uh, what's the word I'm looking for, I guess academic. So it's not just yeah. about who's um, physically most like strong or fast, but it's really a team who can overcome these challenges along the way. Chris, are you always proud of how it turns out, and how do you think it turned out this year? Mm -hmm. Since the majority of it was ran by our student staff, I think we're very proud of it. It gives them a great leadership opportunity. Uh, I think this year, with about 45 teams, it's one of our larger years. I think they're looking to grow it again next year. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. That helps with the biking section, and I started running on the weekend. Yeah, uh, I didn't do anything specific this year, but uh, I do bike a lot every day. It's just yeah, it just every day exercise. I'll tell you what, that competition means business. My favorite part of the whole race was the last obstacle, the mud pit. After all that running and biking and mystery solving, you have to jump in a huge pile of mud and army crawl your way out to get to the finish line. I just know if I did that race, I would get to the mud and just totally give up. I could only imagine how exhausting that is. Give up? <laughs> Not you, Katie. I think we could have won that co -ed race. As far as the mud is concerned, we just have to man up. Yeah, yeah, I probably wouldn't have given up, but it would take me at least three showers to get all of that mud out of this hair. Oh, don't you worry. We're probably going to hop on board with one of these cool competitions before the semester is over. I can promise you that. We'll be right back with some more GSU sports action after another commercial break.
Okay, so at the beginning of this week, we had a lot of great soccer games going on. It was actually senior weekend for both the women's and the men's team. The men defeated both Appalachian State University and Jacksonville University. The women defeated the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. It's about time for the men's soccer team to step up. I've wanted to see some consistency out of them this season. It was a great senior day for the men's soccer team. I mean, they beat App State, although football isn't the only sport the Mountaineers are struggling in. They currently hold a record of 3-4-6, and six, going 1-3-1 one, and one in the conference. For GSU, the day was fitting. As senior, Roberto Lopez tell it the only goal for GSU in a 1-0 defeat of the Mountaineers. After losing 5-0 to Jacksonville University last year, the Eagles came back with a vengeance this year as they defeated JU 4-1. Three Eagles recorded their first goal in this match. Coach Kennedy said he had, this, he had his team pressure that JU offense, which allowed them the opportunity to counterattack, and they did. Coach Kennedy said it was just one of those nights where his team could have scored seven or eight goals. I mean, to think that this women's team defeated a team who had not lost an away match in the last four years is so impressive. This match goes out to both of the defenses, though. Neither one of the defenses let a single goal be scored in the first half and then continued to do so for most of the second half until GSU's Nora El Shami scored the one and only goal of the match with 12 minutes left in the match. And what is cool about her getting the game-winning goal is that last year she also scored the game-winning goal against UNCG in the opening round of the SOCON tournament. She must pull out all the tricks up her sleeve when it's time to play this Spartan team. Despite their struggles this year, the women's soccer team plays well in conference play. They have a 3-3-1 record and could continue to surprise some teams in the conference going forward. As for surprises with the volleyball team, I'd be surprised if they lose another match. Before I say anything about this team, can I just say how excited I am that they are finally back home this weekend. This is one of the strongest athletic teams this fall, and I just love watching them destroy all of these SOCON teams. So, of course, the girls had the oh-so-sad 2-3 to three loss against Furman University. But that just fueled the fire when it was time for this team to hit the road after two home tournaments and four home conference games. This week and last week, the girls had four road games against UNCG, Elon University, App State, and Western Carolina University. But don't you worry, they swept three of the teams 3-0 to zero, and had a close 3-2 match against App, but struck them down as well. I want to give two shout-outs. Shout One to Kim Coley for being tremendously consistent on the road, earning at least eight kills every game, tallying 43 kills on this road swing. And two, I want, to, I want everyone to recognize that these hitters are so outstanding and post such high numbers with an immense amount of help from their setter, Caitlin Minerly. Her minim, minimum assists in a match on this road swing was 33, and her highest was 52. She tallied up a total of 165 assists and 25 digs for the Eagles on the road. So with all this said, Shaquem, tell me what the Eagle fans should be on the lookout for this weekend when they play UTC and Sanford at home. More dominant play, Katie. This team is good, and barring any injuries, I do not see them losing this weekend. UTC sits at a putrid 3-20 this season, the next-to-last worst record in the conference. However, Sanford is 14-9 and, and could test GSU, but I doubt it. If anything, they may win one set before the Eagles turn off the lights. Yeah, this is quite a powerhouse team. That's all the sports talk we have for you this week. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next week.